viewers, welcome to McRoy's Motors, and in today's video, I am with my brother today. What's up? And it's only been less than 100 hours or so since I picked up Tallulah, my 2003 Ford Taurus. And what do you think I'm going to be doing with her? You may think I'm going to work on her. No. I'm going to be driving her to Fort Wayne, Indiana. And before you ask, hey Nick, did you go to Fort Wayne, Indiana earlier this year? The answer to that is yes. This guy actually met some girl who lives in Fort Wayne, Indiana, and I'll be driving him to go meet her for the very first time. Meanwhile, as a treat for him, me basically driving him all the way over to Fort Wayne, he paid for me to have a ticket at one of the biggest museums that I've always wanted to go to. So stick around, because we'll be leaving in just a few short hours. Ready to hit the road, my guy? Yeah. Let's see this shit. Let's set the GPS and see where it gets us. Alright, total drive time is going to be roughly 3 hours and 20 minutes, but we plan on stopping halfway in Mansfield, Ohio, so I can show my brother a couple of things, plus maybe stop for a piss break, you never know. But we should be there by around 8 o'clock. It's now 10 after 4 now. Let's do it. Of course, with any road trip, you gotta eat something before you hit the road, so we stopped at the local Sheets to eat some wieners. And yes, my brother here, for the first time in his life, he's actually eating a wiener. So we're about to hit the road, or so we thought, because this, this, this dumbass garbage truck decided to park right on our ass. Gotta love it though, so, trip's been a little delayed, but we'll be alright. What a bitch. Alright, we're officially hitting the road now, and we have a, a long drive of 215 miles ahead of us. All I can say is let's do it! So Brendan and I made a stop here at this rather fetching and rather gorgeous truck stop. We are in the city of Ashland in central Ohio right now, so we still have another 160 or so miles on the road. But this truck stop is actually rather pretty. I'm quite surprised. But that is not the whole story here. You see, I used to live not too far from here, and I remember the last time I was at this truck stop, it was pouring down snow to the point I couldn't even see outside. I'm currently in Mansfield, Ohio right now, and I took my brother here because I actually used to live in this town back in 2020, 2021. And how do you feel knowing that you've seen the world's first subway with a drive-thru? That's pretty cool. The stuff you see in this town, honestly, surprises pretty much anybody. Besides the fact that the uh, film, The Shawshank Redemption, was also filmed down here. Point. We are now halfway between our, where we set off in uh, Cuyahoga Falls, Ohio to our destination in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And we are in the middle of Crawford County, Ohio. And you can definitely tell, because we are surrounded by nothing and emptiness. And it's going to be like this pretty much the rest of the journey. How exciting. But just a few miles back, complete to my surprise, or lack thereof, given the fact that this is Ohio, there is construction absolutely everywhere. What does the ODOT do during their spare time? I mean, they cause more projects than they can actually finish. 
It's ridiculous. But hey, at least it's a beautiful day. So I'm not complaining too much. Now officially, a hundred miles away. Final stretch, my guy. Give some up. Let's get this shit done. As the road trip progressed, I was becoming more increasingly worried about my increasingly irritating passenger. Quit it. Quit it. Quit it. Boy, quit it. Quit it. Looks like a... You bastard. Now I look like I piss on an electric fence thanks to you. You want my guy just lay there. Huh? <laughs> That's so gay. <laughs> Saw the sign. Or the blue one? The brown one, right there. Small? Yep, it's brown. You see it. Alright, my brother. Welcome to Indiana. Woo! Almost there. Alright, my brother is now dropped off with his girlfriend right now, and they seem to be having a wonderful time. And now I'm on my way to part two of this crazy adventure. This should be really, really cool. The Auburn Cord Duesenberg Museum in Auburn, Indiana. I should be at the museum hopefully in the next 40 or so minutes. But by golly, just thinking about it makes me excited. I'm nervous, but very excited. The reason why I'm so nervous is because I've been seeing cars worth hundreds of thousands of dollars and some of the car rarest cars America has ever produced. The slogan is simply incredible. I don't know if this is the most accurate I can make it, but it, the slogan is something like, the cars of yesterday live today. I think that to me is just the cherry on top of the cake. It is amazing to think that Indiana once rivaled Detroit as the Motor City because if you were to drive from Ohio into Indiana, all you really just see nowadays is a bunch of cornfields. But that being said though, Indiana was home to some of the most opulent and most incredible luxury cars of our nation's history. We're talking cars that rival Rolls Royce, Bentley. And yet, Indiana really isn't making much other than corn and maybe some other things in factories, but the automobile days are long, long gone. It is also pretty wild to think that less than a week ago, I bought this Ford Taurus off Facebook Marketplace, and yet here I am, 240 miles away from home. And yet, this car is still working absolutely perfectly. So Tallulah, you've done alright so far. I just passed, not too long ago, what had to be the biggest hospital I had ever seen. It was easily a half a mile from one side to the other. Of course with many branches and stuff like that, but the overall concept is the same. But half a mile? Are you sure as heck don't have hospitals that big a mile? I would be nice about that. But now we are just 12 miles away from our destination. And I'm already seeing some good stuff through the windows. I can only imagine what it's like inside. But we shall see what awaits us. Alright, in we go. Holy moly. Look at that dash. What would I give? to drive some of these cars. Quite a view, isn't it? Behind me right here is a 1923 Stutz Speedway 4. I always believed this was a rival to being America's first sports car. But it just blows my mind how big these engines were back in the day. This is powered by a four-cylinder engine, but it's got 365 cubic inches. I am hearing all the documentaries and all the films associated with this museum and it just blows my mind how much of a different time it was when those films were supposed to, supposedly supposed to take place. It was designed for the lady drivers. I love that. Of course no museum like this would be complete without some Jags. We got 1963 E-Type here as well as a 1951 XK120. Back when the XK120 was new, it was the fastest car in the world. How does 
a car that started production, I think, in 1948, three years after World War II ended, become the fastest car in the world is simply amazing. This green beauty next to me is a 1952 Cis Italia 202 Grand Sport Convertible. I think it is by far my favorite car here, not only because it has a Pininfarina design body, but the fact that they made 170 of these 202 Grand Sports, but this is a convertible, which makes it just one of 17 ever made. And it is simply a gorgeous car. I mean, to think that only 17 were made and sent into one of them just simply gives me goosebumps. And what's also interesting, in 1952, the year that this Cis Italia was made, I hope I can pronounce that right, Dwight D. Eisenhower was president of the United States at the time, and seatbelts in cars for the United States was introduced. Here we have yet another cord. This one is a Model 810. And then next to it, we have something on British plates. I can't really tell what this is. It's an Auburn of some kind. But how's this? A C1 Corvette. Absolutely beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. And this is actually my first time seeing an Indy racing car in the flesh. I'd be at one from 21 years ago, but still, it looks like a freaking spaceship. And then the car I've been wanting to see most of all is this one here. The 1935 Auburn 851. In my opinion, one of the most beautiful cars America has ever made. This beats the Model A's, this beats the REO's, this beats pretty much everything. This to me is the bread, not the bread and butter, but the hidden jewel of this entire museum. This is the car I've been looking forward to seeing the most. It is quite wild to think that the wheelbase on this car is almost as long as my entire Trabant. <laughs> Measures 127 inches. My Trabant is only maybe a half a foot to a foot longer. This right here is the most valuable car in the entire museum. I know I looked at it once already, but I just found out more about it. It turns out it is the very first passenger car Duesenberg has ever made and it's worth $15 million. Just standing this close to it could give anybody goosebumps. 1933 Checker Taxi Cab. Absolutely breathtaking. Like, I've never actually seen a Checker Cab from the 80s before, but to see one from the 30s, this is a real treat. Five cents for one-fifth of a mile. Good golly, this thing is so cool. Of course, you got this beautiful cord L29 right next to it. Oh, and this airplane, 1946 Stinson. All right, guys, I'm here with Graham here. He owns this beautiful Auburn you see in the distance. And we're gonna go for a ride. Yes, we are. What year is this Auburn? 1935. Gorgeous. It's a 1935 Auburn 851 sedan. Oh, this thing's beautiful. I saw the little bow tie that he's got inside. Oh, yeah. No seatbelts, we die like real men. You drive like men and you die like men. Oh, this is gonna be awesome. Oh, I don't mean I'm sorry if I slammed it. Yeah, you did a little bit. I'm sorry about that. Oh, you're fine. I'm so used to it with my Trabant, you have to slam it, otherwise yeah. you're, you're, you're screwed. Is it a three speed, a four speed? Three speed. Uh, Duesenberg owners had issues with uh, people throwing rocks at their cars. Oh. And it was just not appropriate to drive cars like this at the time, so a lot of them went into storage. Right. And then they weren't seen until the 1940s or 50s. And it was in the 1950s when the uh, Auburn Corps Duesenberg Club was formed, and they actually had their very first reunion at what is now the museum. Might if I ask, has Jay Leno been to your museum? Oh yeah, many times. Yep, he's been, yeah, he's been to the museum many times. I know a friend of his. Um, his name is Myron Rennes. Sure. I haven't heard of his name. He's got some pretty interesting cars. He's got an Autec Zagato AZ1, uh, which is like one of just like 80 ever made. Huh. 
But it's just it blows my mind. Like, if you were to say that there's a car that's made in Indiana, nobody's gonna really take you seriously anymore. But back in the heyday, yeah, Indiana was, was a huge rival to Detroit. To, yeah, and actually, in my opinion, it was better than Detroit. I agree. In Indiana, I mean, in Detroit, you had a lot of. Uh, you got Fords, you, yeah, you got Chevy, Ford, Dodge, Chevy, Dodge, Plymouth, all of that, Chrysler. But in Indiana, you had the most extravagant cars. The yeah. Auburn Corps Duesenberg. I mean, Auburn was actually built right here in Auburn, Indiana, up until the last two years of the production, so 35 and 36. Cords were built, the early Cords, uh, the L29, they were actually built in what is the Natmus Museum, right behind the Auburn Corps Duesenberg Museum. But then they moved the court production to Connersville, Indiana, and Duesenberg was uh, out of Indianapolis. And it just stayed all right here in, all, uh, in uh, Indiana. Yep. And uh, and it's a shame because you, apart from the museum, you can't really tell that there's anything here. Yeah. It's just the, the, the history is here. connected to this small city is just so extravagant. And it's just what I love. That's what I love the most about it is the history. Absolutely. It, and in my opinion, what makes a car valuable is not, you know, how it's worth, how much it's worth, or how the quality of the restoration is. It's the story of the car and the story of the company, how they exactly. started, where they're from. And this car, of course, it has a really personal story with Lester C. and the tie with the museum. But also, it's in Auburn, and that's just a huge tie to Indiana history. And of course, Indiana's my home, so yeah. I'm a little bit biased. <laughs> Yeah, I, I was born in Georgia, but I um, I definitely was uh, moved. I moved to Ohio at a very, 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 very young age. So much so that I don't even remember it half the time. But if I could do anything to go back, I would. So, uh, do you know how to drive a three speed? I do know how to drive a stick. The Trabant is a stick on a column, so I don't imagine it being any more difficult. Yeah. I mean, it's just a H yeah. pattern, yeah. and you don't double clutch. Like I said, it's first. Second. second and then third and then your reverse is here. Are you suggesting I take this thing for a spin? Because if you are, holy shit. <laughs> you can do it right here in the parking lot if you're comfortable. I'll be getting comfortable, yeah. I don't feel comfortable driving on the street. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. Hey, okay. Golly, that's a throw. Well, there you go. You drove your first Auburn. Yeah. That is pretty darn cool. I'm sorry if it was hard on your clutch. A little bit. But that was really cool. That was an experience I'll never forget. Yeah. Welcome to Auburn, Indiana. I give Graham massive credit. He just told me that his daily driver is a 48 Ford. And I give massive thank you to the staff as well as all the volunteers, as well as Graham himself for letting me take out his 35 Auburn. This was incredible. I mean, just the overall, just the atmosphere, the staff, everybody it was just so welcoming. So, <laughs> I've got to put wrap my head around this because this was by far the coolest thing I had ever experienced. And it was kind of hard to navigate that clutch because with the Trabant, it bites almost instantaneously. With that Auburn, you have to be very easy on it and then give it as much gas as you can. So, Time to head back to Fort Wayne and see what my brother's up to. After we picked up my brother and his girlfriend, we went to the appropriately named Spencerville, Indiana, a small Amish community that there really isn't much left of. The reason why I took my brother here is because his last name happened to be Spencer. We spent a good time and we just admired the towns as well as the Amish buggies that rode right by. This was something I'll never forget. And to my viewers at home, I want to say a massive thank you for watching. If you liked the video, feel free to like it, subscribe for more content if you haven't done so already, and I'll see you guys in another video.